Hello, I'm Dr. David Pate, President and CEO of St. Luke's Health System. I'm really glad to spend some time with you today. In the fall, we look back at our progress, and spring is where we're headed and what we need to do. Spring is when we chart our course, and it's an opportunity to review our strategy and some of our key initiatives for the year. Our strategy is accountable care, represented by the triple aim of better health, better care, and lower costs. We're navigating new waters as healthcare continues to change, and we're making impressive advances in all areas of the triple aim. Better health may be the most challenging aspect of the triple aim for those of us steeped in the traditional, hospital-centered, fee-for-service approach. But we're making progress and increasing our capabilities at managing health, and our yay, Youth Engaged in Activities for Health programs in Wood River, the Magic Valley, and the Treasure Valley are all good examples of what we can do. Through the YAY program, we're involving young people in their own health and well-being, and by extension, their families and communities. And we're also innovating with Healthy You. This year, we invited spouses to join and those who complete a Know Your Number screening and online health assessment qualify for an additional premium reduction. We also added weight and waste as the newest targets for our 2013 benefits plan year. Meeting targets there results in additional premium discounts. Because of employees' participation in improving their own health and controlling health care costs, while premiums nationally have increased in the double digits and premiums in Idaho have increased roughly 8%, St. Luke's has been able to lower the increase for employees to just 3.5%. And those who qualify for all possible Healthy U credits saw premiums only increase $13. Congratulations to all of our employees who have made this possible. Now, how did that picture get in there? Population health, managing the health of a population, can't be a St. Luke's only endeavor, which is one of the reasons St. Luke's has so many partnerships with community organizations and why I volunteered to co-chair the upcoming March for Babies Walk. Please join us April 27th in Boise and May 4th in Twin Falls. So better health is one aspect of our triple aim. Better care is another, and we're making great strides here as well. We are continuing to improve care across St. Luke's Health System, and people from throughout the regions we serve are leading these efforts. Dr. John Schott here, and all the great folks at St. Luke's Clinic, Baker City, have taken our St. Luke's triple aim to heart in creating a multidisciplinary medical home in a rural community. As a result, they've been named an exemplar practice by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for other healthcare organizations to learn from. Dr. Andrew Chai is also doing exemplary work with our heart failure clinic and our heart patients that is better coordinating care and resulting in fewer readmissions to the hospital. Dr. Jim Torres and many others working together have earned the Joint Commission's disease-specific care certification as a primary stroke center in the Treasure Valley. And work is already underway toward the same certification in the Magic Valley. Dr. Brian Goltry and the team are off to an impressive start with our EICU, which allows critical care intensivists and other specialists from our tertiary care hospitals to evaluate, treat, stabilize, and monitor patients in conjunction with colleagues in other locations. In just the first night of operations, we saw the benefits this cutting edge technology provides to patients while making more efficient use of intensivists and the entire team of people who provide care to our critically ill patients. 
Dr. Betsy Oberding is pioneering an effort to better prepare our patients for surgery, an effort that dovetails neatly with Dr. Kevin Shea's Project Zero Infection Prevention Initiative. Together, they are improving the safety and outcomes of patients undergoing surgery at St. Luke's. And Dr. William Traverso, a world-renowned pancreatic surgeon, is doing incredible work to improve outcomes for patients with severe pancreatitis. In a recent study, mortality rates were remarkably better for the cohort of patients in Boise compared with the other participating site. As someone who used to be involved in the care of such patients, I am amazed at the outcomes we are achieving through Dr. Traverso's work. I am so proud of these physicians and so many others. Every single one of them and all our clinicians and staff members are proving every day that the triple aim is possible. And lower cost, the third aspect of the triple aim. You'll hear from Mike Reno in just a bit about many of our teamwork efforts. But I wanted to note how critical teamwork will be to our efforts to bend the cost curve. Care coordination, and Dr. Jeff Swanson will talk about that in just a few minutes, is another critical piece of our triple aim. Care coordination hinges on our relationships with our community and payer partners. Relationships among those in the healthcare delivery chain are changing. Our Care of Patients at Risk, or COPAR, effort with one of our payer partners is keeping our focus on some of our patients with the most complicated and chronic conditions. Changing relationships means changing requirements and information, and our ability to pinpoint needs and care patterns through increased information is getting dramatically better, to the point that it will soon transform our ability to improve the management of patients in our clinically integrated network. Here's John Key to tell you more about how we're partnering with payers and a Boise company called White Cloud Analytics to be accountable for the healthcare costs of a population of people. Hi, I'm John Key. St. Luke's Health System Vice President of Physician Services. I want to tell you a little bit about our payer relationships and data gathering work. When we talk about our triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost, innovation in our relationships with insurers is important. To adjust our relationships with payers, and for many other reasons, we need good, reliable data and timely information. We've been working with White Cloud Analytics for the past several years to collect data that wasn't available before. And that effort is beginning to pay off in many ways with a valuable and growing collection of information about our clinical activity and our operations. Statistical data, measures of quality, and care metrics are captured and combed to give us accurate, and timely reports based on more than 1.3 million patients, more than 5 million patient encounters, and more than 7 million patient accounts. By combining claims, encounters, accounts receivable, billing, and other data, we can now see patterns in everything from how we care for patients to how bills get paid. Physicians can see how their diabetes care compares with other physicians from across the country, or how a specific patient is doing when it comes to care for his own diabetes. White Cloud has helped us build eight different, highly detailed dashboards, which are snapshots of information that let the physicians who lead our quality and care initiatives know where we're doing well so that we can share those practices across the health system and that let our financial team see how we're doing when it comes to all phases of the revenue cycle. We must be continuously mindful stewards of the community's resources so that we can do our best on behalf of our patients. To do that, we need to be as efficient as possible with all of our assets, including our revenues. These new dashboards are helping us pinpoint successes and challenges more immediately so that we can move promptly on things that need our attention. 
For the first time, we can know where billing bottlenecks are, what the payer trends are, and very specifically, how departments across St. Luke's health system are performing. Many of you have seen our reports that track readmissions, patient safety, patient satisfaction, and our other quality and care gauges. We'll be using much more of this information moving forward. We've measured care and quality in our hospitals for quite some time now. These new dashboards allow us to expand our focus on activity in our ambulatory clinic settings. As we move into accountable care, and the management of the health of entire populations, this information and these dashboards will help us design preventive health and wellness programs and pinpoint areas or populations of opportunity. For the first time, we'll get longitudinal looks at patient and population health for those we serve. We'll also be able to improve patient access, which we believe will enhance the patient experience we'll be able to see what we can do to speed up and streamline processes all the way along the care continuum. All of these improvements are in keeping with our 2013 goals, to create an exceptional patient experience, to create exceptional outcomes through teamwork, and our triple aim goals of providing better health, better care, and at a lower cost. I wanna take a minute and talk about my personal experience with my mom. My mom will turn 92 in a week. And the history of my mom's health care was started with individual disconnected family practices in a small community hospital that was not connected to any health system. And my sister, as the caretaker for my mom, was continuously running into problems with continuity of care, with tests being duplicated, with an inability to find continuity within the healthcare system. And I, I would like to share the experience of my mom moving from that environment to that of working within the Providence Integrated Delivery Care System near Portland. When she goes to the doctor now, she has all of her records available to her in the unfortunate circumstance of being hospitalized, which in my mom's case is at least one time a year, all of the records are readily available, all the tests are readily available, and what we've seen is a transformed patient experience of my mom being served within an integrated system, cooperating with the payers, reducing costs, and really at the end of the day, a much more comforting patient experience. So. That is the journey that we are on at St. Luke's, is to improve the patient experience by working with our payers, by working with our patients that we are so privileged to serve. And in that way, we think we will achieve the triple aim. I cannot thank all of you enough for being a participant in this journey and for being a part of this transformation. We could not do it without each of you. I want to talk a little bit about our 2013 goals and some of the great people who are making our goals a reality. And I have to say, there are so many great examples and stories to choose from. Keep them coming. You saw what White Cloud is helping us to do, but nothing takes the place of compassionate clinicians. Our 2013 goals are creating an exceptional patient experience, and creating exceptional outcomes through teamwork. Let's start with the patient experience. And nurse Tricia Bredenson, who's doing just that in the Magic Valley with the obstetrics team. Tricia's work is having a tangible impact on Magic Valley's HCAP scores by focusing on both employee engagement and patient satisfaction. Tricia incorporates an active unit shared governance model, improved communication with employees, including a monthly unit newsletter, active manager rounding and follow-up, implementing action plans based on the past employee engagement survey, bedside shift reporting, hourly rounding, and adoption of best practices from nurses on the unit that excel at customer service. 
In less than a half a year, Tricia and her team have made remarkable improvements in their employee and patient scores to show for their efforts. St. Luke's HCAP scores, which help us gauge patient satisfaction, are steadily improving and it's because of the efforts of leaders like Tricia and the hard work all of you do. We heard a lot about the patient experience and the importance of truly collaborating with patients from cancer survivor Dave DeBroncart, whose tireless activism on behalf of patient empowerment has turned him into ePatient Dave. Dave joined us recently for our annual St. Luke's Health System Summit, and I'd encourage you to watch his presentation on my blog. We're doing a lot of things right, according to Dave. My St. Luke's, our electronic health record, and the convenience of the new 381 Today Easy Access Service in the Treasure Valley are just two great examples of how we're empowering patients. Patients and physicians are getting more comfortable and confident in connecting by email. That email function is something that Dr. Rob Smith and others have found great value in. And Dr. Schott's clinic and others are extending their hours, which goes a long way to meeting patients' needs. And our other goal for 2013 is creating exceptional outcomes through teamwork. I just met with a great group of incredibly motivated team members at St. Luke's Clinic Internal Medicine Park Center who have had truly impressive successes improving the patient experience, boosting morale, saving money, and eliminating waste by applying teamwork, which is St. Luke's version of lean efficiency principles. Working with performance excellence, supply chain, and other departments, they've improved quality and safety. Please take time to visit my blog and read the story where we featured Slim and their results. Here's Mike Reno to update you on our Medicare Shared Savings Program participation and tell you more about teamwork. Hi, I'm Mike Reno, St. Luke's Health System Vice President of Performance Excellence. I want to update you on our work with the Medicare Shared Savings Program and teamwork. St. Luke's participation in the Medicare Shared Savings Program, which started in January, is the launching point for much of our transformation going forward. It's the bridge between the changes to our business model that John talked about and the changes to our clinical structures. Our Medicare Shared Savings Program participation is where we move from concept to practice. Since January, we've been notifying thousands of Medicare beneficiaries about our participation in the program. And based on the information we're getting with White Cloud's help, we're starting to interact with these patients in more engaging and proactive ways. We're also now able to provide individual feedback to their providers regarding their care and condition. That information is sent automatically to physicians for their use so that they can identify opportunities to improve care based on the new information they have about their patient or about their performance compared with their peers. This is a significant difference in how we've approached our patient relationships because it's taking us into individual patient management. And this is our first year in the Medicare Shared Savings Program, so we're reporting into ourselves about our performance across 33 quality measures. Going forward, we'll share in any savings realized through this more proactive approach based on our performance. But for now, we're in a data gathering mode. Organizations that have been doing this for a while are showing impressive gains when it comes to achieving the triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost. They are improving their quality and bending the cost curve. We're excited about the potential we see with the Medicare Shared Savings Program participation. I am just as excited about our progress around teamwork. Teamwork is our management operating system, our culture, the way we do things, not just a set of tools. Teamwork combines people, process, and problem solving so that we can be more efficient and effective in delivering the services we provide to one another, our providers, and most importantly, our patients. Teamwork empowers our frontline staff members to take actions, to identify issues, to redesign processes, and to be accountable for the outcomes. 
Creating exceptional outcomes through teamwork is one of our two 2013 goals and is fundamental to the improvements we are making. I like to say that our other goal of creating an exceptional patient experience is the why and teamwork is the how. Teamwork functions at many levels. Examples include our new processes and workflow analysis for our new electronic intensive care unit program and hand hygiene initiative. And we've started a series of rapid improvement activities, identifying hotspots and pain points, and moving quickly to identify, address, and eliminate the issues that cause us to be less effective than we could be. This benefits our patients and their families, improves our quality, and again, helps us to meet the ends of the triple aim. We're also working on larger teamwork projects at several of our sites and in various departments. And we've recently rolled out pilot projects at St. Luke's Children's and St. Luke's Magic Valley. Staff members are using teamwork communication boards to identify issues, barriers, and opportunities, post those ideas, and facilitate discussion and decision-making around what to work on. Weekly stand-up meetings at the boards let staff members prioritize what needs to be worked on, assign those tasks, and report back on the progress. Process problem solving is what drives teamwork, and that starts by measuring our outcomes. Progress reports can be sent up through service lines so that the best practices can be spread and be adopted throughout the system. We're also applying teamwork principles like standardization to our purchasing decisions and processes. This is a huge effort and will have a big impact on our effectiveness and success with the triple aim. Our physician leaders and partners have begun to work through the thousands of different drugs and devices we use to help us put together standardized lists of pharmaceuticals and clinical devices that are the right choices for St. Luke's and our patients. We've been using five separate formularies representing more than 70,000 different medications with new additional requests for purchases coming in every week. And the evidence says we should have between 35,000 and 50,000 total medications on our formulary based on benchmark systems similar to St. Luke's. From a system standpoint, this approach to purchasing has meant variation in care, variation in pricing, and variation in how much we pay. Quite frankly, it defeats the purpose of being a system. It doesn't add value. And it isn't in keeping with our vision to deliver integrated, seamless, and patient-centered quality care across all St. Luke's settings. We know there are rational reasons for some of this variance based on different types of treatment or services at the different sites. That will never change, nor should it. But we still must make an effort to reduce the irrational variance and degree of individual preference, and our staff members and physicians are playing a vital role in helping to determine which of our medications and supplies lead to the best outcomes and the most value for our patients. We're also using teamwork to improve our revenue cycle work. For a long time now, and I know you've heard it too, patients have told us we can make our billing processes and patient experience better. We are beginning to tackle that area of our operations and you'll hear more going forward. We're aiming to have everyone throughout the system take part in a teamwork activity by the end of 2016 and hundreds of folks have trained and taken part in teamwork efforts already. It's an ambitious goal to get everyone involved, but it's our aspiration and many of the teamwork activities we're engaged in now are expanding our competencies in additional locations and among additional work groups. I want to share with you an exciting story I recently heard from Dr. Laura McGeorge, who served as a significant physician leader around a teamwork activity in the St. Luke's Internal Medicine Clinic Park Center. Thanks to her leadership and executive sponsor, Rhea Morrison, we held a teamwork building activity over the course of 16 weeks. The site manager, Rachel Jaquis, led a team who worked day in and day out to be more effective and more efficient in providing patient care. The results that we have seen to date have included a standardized rooming process, which benefits our patients, standardized room inventories, which has helped us to decrease the overall clinic inventory, increased staff and physician engagement because now they're a part of the decision-making process, and decreased patient callback times. We feel strongly about this approach. We think it's our way to a sustainable future. Teamwork is about operational excellence. St. Luke's has a history of performing. Teamwork builds on that history, making our pursuit of excellence continuous. I'm proud to be a part of St. Luke's and proud of all of you. Thank you for your time and attention and for everything you do for our patients and their families.
Medicare Shared Savings Program, teamwork, and our other initiatives play into our strategic plan. St. Luke's follows a three-year strategic planning process, and we're finalizing our most recent plan now for the next three years. We're really trying to be transparent about our work and thinking, and I plan to post our strategic plan on my blog in late May or early June. What we're seeing and planning for is an increased focus on transformation of our care and business models. I've spoken before about the shifts we must make from a fee-for-service to a value-based business model. And how we deliver care must also shift, and Dr. Jeff Swanson's going to talk about that here in just a bit. We've seen such smart and innovative thinking from physician leaders and board members across the health system during this planning cycle. And I have to thank them for their very active and committed participation. To design a care model that provides for better health, we have to get into the health business end to end. Here's Dr. Jeff Swanson to share information on our care coordination efforts. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Swanson. I'm a family medicine physician, and I serve St. Luke's as System Vice President for Clinical Integration, President of the Select Medical Network, and Chair of the Bright Path Board. I wanted to take a few moments to talk to you about our care delivery and clinical integration efforts. The changes in the payer relationships that John talked about earlier are critically linked to our efforts to manage population health. To effectively manage population health, systems of the near future must deliver care comprehensively across the continuum, and we at St. Luke's are developing these capabilities. To do this, we have to think outside the box and expand how we have done care delivery in the past. No longer can we just think about rendering care in our offices and hospitals, because we know the future of care will be tied to helping people with their health in more global ways. We are developing our care delivery model so that we will be more involved before people get sick by engaging them in new ways to help them maintain their health and adopt healthy habits. We will continue to provide the great care for which St. Luke's is known when people are ill or injured, but we are beginning to expand our involvement in other critically important areas as well and starting to incorporate care for people with long-term care needs and in skilled nursing facilities, and we are better coordinating care. Going forward, our ability to sustain this new model of care delivery will determine our success. This calls on us to expand our competencies, get smarter about the patient experience, and apply our resources in new, coordinated, and clinically integrated ways. I want to share examples of some of our ongoing work. All of them move us towards our triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost, and our 2013 goals of creating an exceptional patient experience and creating exceptional outcomes through teamwork. First, our care coordination efforts, which have lots to do with better health, one of the functions of the new data analytics that John talked about is to allow us to better understand the needs of our population so that we can better apply our limited resources and our new payer relationships give us more responsibility for people outside of our hospital settings. So we are developing a comprehensive care management process, building upon our existing infrastructure of inpatient case management, social work, and other great programs. At the same time, taking a broader look at care before people become patients and better addressing the needs of people with complex health issues who are outside of the hospital. Our evolving COPAR project, COPAR stands for Care of Patients at Risk, and other care coordination efforts will allow us to apply team-based care for those people who really need it. Aligning our care also extends beyond the walls of St. Luke's into those skilled nursing rehabilitation facilities that I mentioned before. We are beginning to work more closely than ever with our community partners to ensure seamless transitions of our patients when they leave St. Luke's settings. Our Diabetes Education and Management Initiative, or DEAM, started in November and is one of our first attempts at comprehensive process improvement involving a chronic disease state 
that is mostly ambulatory and self-managed. Again, our new data gathering and reporting capabilities and My St. Luke's, our electronic health record system, have been instrumental in helping us to pinpoint opportunities when it comes to diabetes care. The steering work group for the DEEM initiative represents all of our communities and regions, the St. Luke's Clinic and independent providers working together to solve clinical care issues. Focused subgroups are working on patient engagement, patient and provider education, behavioral health issues, and diabetes self-management. We are analyzing gaps in these critical areas and will begin to fill those gaps by identifying and integrating best practices throughout our region. Specialty clinics launched in Magic Valley, the integration of diabetes educators in our Treasure Valley clinic settings, and the Diabetes Day event that Wood River has created are all great examples of efforts that, if effective, can be scaled or adapted to the region going forward. When it comes to better care, our Center for Spine Wellness Initiative is focusing on the application of shared decision making when it comes to back pain management and education. We are rolling out a project involving an electronic shared decision making tool in our primary care offices with the possibility of expanding its use even into the workplace. With this initiative, we're working more closely than ever with patients to frame expectations around back pain and supplying robust and unbiased education about the condition and how it is managed. With engaged employers, we are exploring this approach as an enhanced benefit for employees. Finally, I want to talk about the most difficult part of the triple aim to achieve, that of lower cost. Standardizing our supplies and our techniques where it makes sense and is appropriate, such as Mike discussed, is necessary for our sustainability going forward. Our physician partners, with great operational and administrative support, are working hard throughout the region and engaging in more conversation than ever before about medical evidence, best practices, and value to deliver quality outcomes for our patients. Above all else, we remain focused on our patients who remain at the center of all of our discussions and decisions. I believe that patient-centeredness is very different than patient satisfaction. Both are important, but it's our relationships with our patients at the center that lead to their activation and engagement, shared decision-making, and other important elements to this transformation of healthcare that we're talking about. Empowering our patients in these and other ways and creating these patient-centered relationships will go a long way toward creating an exceptional experience for our patients and ensuring that we create exceptional outcomes. And we are beginning to ask the hard questions, the ones our patients want us to ask. Did we talk about end of life? Were you as the patient included in the decision? Did we make the decision together? I want to tell you about my patient, Cynthia Burr. Many of you are familiar with Sai and her story. Sai passed away near the end of the year. She reminded me, and she reminds us all, of one of the most important things we can do as providers. We must have transparent and candid conversations about the most difficult of issues. It's all about open communication, and we must do more of it. I believe that together, we can accomplish great things and move through these uncertain times in American healthcare to improve the health of people in our region. Thanks for your time and attention. Here's the difference it makes when all of us at St. Luke's take the triple aim and accountable care to heart. I want to introduce you to Mike Griffiths, Pharmacy Operations Manager in the Treasure Valley. He and his team are really looking at how they work and how they can create an exceptional patient experience. They are an integral part of the care team looking for ways to simplify medication regimens and educating patients on the most effective ways to use their medications to help improve outcomes of care and help prevent avoidable readmissions to the hospital. They are also helping patients who face financial hardships get access to the medications that are necessary to improve their health. Dr. Swanson also mentioned cyber. Sai was on the St. Luke's team every bit as much as the rest of us. She drew attention to the need for a close look at how we treat end-of-life issues. 
we must honor her memory by incorporating all that she taught us so that we can improve our care for others and remember to always do our best, as Sai encouraged us to do. Our future depends upon advanced illness management, the integration of palliative care into our management of chronic illnesses, and patient and family-centered care requires that we understand patient goals and preferences. Our success depends on keeping people from becoming patients and keeping patients out of the hospital whenever possible. For those who require hospitalization, success also depends on how we help patients move from our hospital settings back into their homes or into skilled nursing facilities or other post-acute providers. It depends upon our ability to manage the health of people and the care of patients and to break down the silos of care that result in fragmented, poorly coordinated, inefficient, and wasteful care. We've got a great crew. That's Dr. John Schott, Dr. Betsy Olberding, and Mike Griffiths. It's Dr. Kevin Shea and Nurse Tricia Bredenson. It's every one of you focusing every day on our patients' true goals and on fixing what is wrong with healthcare. I'm proud to be on board with you. Thank you.